Hi, in this video I'm going to introduce mathematical induction. But first, let's play with some dominoes. So suppose I lined up some dominoes in a row like this, and we called the one on the furthest left the first domino, the one next to it the second, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then so on like this. And now suppose I told you two things. First, I told you that the domino in the first position can be knocked down. And second, I told you that when the nth domino gets knocked down, the one in the n plus oneth position will get knocked down as well. So this second condition says that if we have a domino in the nth position, and we know that that domino gets knocked down, then the domino right next to it in the n plus oneth position will get knocked down as well. And I want to ask, with these two conditions, can we guarantee that all the dominoes in this row will get knocked down, even if there are an infinite number of dominoes? And I claim that the answer is yes, and the logic goes like this. We're given that the first domino gets knocked down. By the second condition, that tells us that the second domino will get knocked down as well, since it's the one right next to the first. Then again, by the second condition, the third domino will get knocked down because it's right next to the second and the fourth domino will get knocked down because it's right next to the third, and so on like that, so every single domino will eventually get knocked down. And this is the idea behind the principle of mathematical induction. So the principle of mathematical induction says that if we have a list of statements, which we call p sub 1, p sub 2, p sub 3, and so on, all the statements are true if we have two conditions satisfied. First, if we know that p sub 1 is true, and that's what we call the base case. And second is if p sub n plus 1 is true whenever p sub n is true. And that's what we call the induction step. So if we can show these two conditions are satisfied, we can prove that a list of statements, even if the list is infinite, are all true without actually having to prove each statement individually. So this can be very helpful when we're looking at proofs involving infinite cases. Let's look at an example. In this example, we want to prove that the sum of all the integers cubed up to n cubed is equal to the sum of all the integers up to n, all of that being squared, for all positive integers. So in this example, our p sub n is just this statement here, and we would get our list of statements by just replacing the different integers with this number n here. So let's go ahead and start our proof. First, we have to start with the base case. And our base case would just be that 1 cubed equals 1 squared, which is clearly true, so that's good. The next step is the induction step. And with the induction step, we have to assume that there is some n such that p sub n is true. Then what we want to do is we want to show that p sub n plus 1 is true. That should be an n, not a k there. Sorry about that. But we need to show that p sub n plus 1 is true when we assume that we have a p sub n being true. So just using this assumption that p sub n is true, we need to show that the p sub n plus 1 case is also true. So let's go ahead and plug in p sub n plus 1 over here. And on the left hand side, we would get the summation of all the cubes now up to n plus 1 cubed. And from our original assumption that p sub n was true, we know that up to here is given by this. So we can write that as the summation of 1 up to n, all of that cubed, and then add on this extra n plus 1 cubed element. Now we can use Gauss's formula to change this summation here into 1 half times n times n plus 1, with all of that being squared. And if you haven't heard or if you forgot about Gauss's formula, it's exactly this. It's just the summation of consecutive integers up to some number n is equal to 1 half n times n plus 1. So we can write it like that, and then we can add on the n plus 1 cubed. Now instead of having this square out here outside of the brackets, we can just square everything inside of the brackets, and we would get that this equals 1 fourth n squared times n plus 1 squared. And now we can see there's an n plus 1 squared here and an n plus 1 squared here with an n plus 1 left over. So we can factor out a 1 fourth n plus 1 squared, and we would get n squared from here. And here we would get 4 times n plus 1. So I just wanted to take out this 1 fourth here to make it a little bit easier for us to see what we're doing. And so that's why I pulled a 1 fourth out over here, even though there wasn't a 1 fourth over here. But now we can distribute the 4 here, and we'll get that this is n squared plus 4n plus 4. And now we can see that this can be factored into n plus 2 squared. So we can write all this as 1 fourth n plus 1 squared times n plus 2 squared. 
Now since each element is being squared, we can rewrite this as 1 half n plus 1 times n plus 2, all of it being squared. And now that it's written like this, we can use Gauss's formula again to see that this should be the summation of everything up to n plus 1. Because if we have n plus 1 here and then we add 1 to that, that would just give us n plus 2. So using Gauss's formula again, we get that this is the summation up to n plus 1, all of that being squared. And with that, we have shown that the n plus 1th case is true because we have shown that the left up to n plus 1 cubed is the same as the right side with the n plus 1 inside the brackets. So we have shown this p sub n plus 1 case being true. And I've run out of room down here, but usually you would sum up this proof by saying that something like by the principle of mathematical induction we have shown that this p sub n statement is true for every positive integer. So hopefully you're understanding the basic idea of these induction proofs. Let's look at another example. In this example, we want to prove that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7 for all positive integers n. So in this case, our statement that relies on the integer n is that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7. And first we want to show the base case. Since it says for all positive integers n, we know that the least case is n equals 1. And I just want to point out that this doesn't always have to be n equals 1. It could have said that we want to prove this for all positive integers n greater than or equal to 3. And then the base case in that instance would be n equals 3. But since it says for all positive integers, the smallest positive integer is 1. So we need to check the first case. So we need to show that 11 to the 1 minus 4 to the 1 is divisible by 7. But clearly 11 to the 1 minus 4 to the 1 is equal to 7, and 7 is clearly divisible by 7, so this base case is true. Next we need to show the induction step. So we have to assume that there is some n such that p sub n is true, and then we have to show that p sub n plus 1 is true as well. So let's go ahead and plug in n plus 1 over here to our p sub n, and we get 11 to the n plus 1 minus 4 to the n plus 1, and we want to try to show that this is also divisible by 7. Using just the fact that we know that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7. So we know we can write this first part as 11 times 11 to the n. And similarly we can write this part as 4 times 4 to the n. Now in order to get things in common we can write 11 as 7 plus 4. And this is probably the trickiest part of the proof just seeing that you can write 11 as 7 plus 4 and doing it. Because after that it's pretty straightforward. So we write 11 as 7 plus 4, and then we multiply that by the 11 to the n. Then we subtract the 4 times 4 to the n. Now we can distribute each of these out, and we get that this is 7 times 11 to the n plus 4 times 11 to the n, and then minus the 4 times 4 to the n. Now we can see we have a common factor of 4, so we're going to get that this equals 7 times 11 to the n plus 4, times 11 to the n minus 4 to the n. Well from our assumption we know that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7 and since we have a 7 out here we know that 7 times 11 to the n is divisible by 7. So that tells us that this whole thing which was equal to 11 to the n plus 1 minus 4 to the n plus 1 that this whole thing is divisible by 7. So we can write that since 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7 our original assumption then we know that 11 to the n plus 1 minus 4 to the n plus 1 is also divisible by 7. And then we can state by mathematical induction that 11 to the n minus 4 to the n is divisible by 7 for all positive integers n. And that concludes our proof. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.